this subject is about is two things, conversions <coughs> and doing a D45 purfling scheme. Is there anybody here that does not know what D45 decoration is? Okay, you know, D45 has to do with the way the pearl is put on the top. A 40 style will just have pearl either just on the rosette or around the top. Let's see, the 40 style has the rosette, 41 has the rim, the 42 has a top just like the 45, but the 45 goes one step further, since they weren't driven crazy enough to do it in the top, they do it in the side and the back and at the neck and on the tailpiece. So, anybody here ever interested in doing conversions? Taking over the top, okay. Well, I'll just glance over that and try to stay on the curve. So, think. How accurate do you want to be? To be? You know, the only difference between. Oh yeah, yeah. Just put your hands up. Thank you. Okay. The how accurate do you want to be to vintage? If you really ever look at some of the old Martin guitar work, it actually compared to today's standard is rather crude. They used solid shell. They'd cut little pieces, and it was just a bunch of little straight pieces to go around the curve, or the you know curves. Their purple material was usually a uh, black paper product and maple. Nowadays we have the plastics, which does make it a lot easier. I'm not saying that one is better. I'm just letting you know that there are differences. <clears throat> when you look at the shell that is on a 45, it's usually a 16th inch. The side pearl is 049, as is the back pearl. What can you say those are the time? Uh, the top is 0 0.065, and the sides are 0 0.049. I'm, I'm, yeah, and the dimensions are in the slide don't have later a on. Okay. Yeah, they're all in the presentation too. Yes. Now, there are a number of different materials out there. <clears throat> Zip Flex is a wonderful material. The only thing is, you have to be extremely extremely accurate in your layout because there's not a lot of layer on pearl. Anybody here not know what ablam is? Okay? Ablam, as you know, is a series of pearl with a nice thin layer on top. There's about 30,000, so you know that you got a little bit more. And solid shell, obviously, is solid shell. The rosette designs change different through the different time periods. So it's basically a I'm going to go from the pearl out. You have pearl, you have 15 thousandths black, you have 40 thousandths white, you have 20 thousandths black, 15 thousandths white, 15 thousandths black. I remember. And then the rosette rings are going to be 30 black, 20 white. 15 black. Okay? The glues that I do use for putting in pearl, typical wood glue. Pipe bond is actually pretty good for this. I do not use super glue on spruce. I have yet to see super glue on spruce that did not turn yellow. <coughs> so my, my binding and purfling glue preference is Duco cement. It works well. We, we all. Okay. All right. Uh, now, red spruce and Sitka, I have a, a, a note there, because those two spruces sometimes machine a little bit differently. Red spruce sometimes can be a little chatty. So if you're going to inlay pearl on your top, allow a little extra thickness. So generally what I do, once I get two surfaces on my top, preferably about 155 thousandths, I will inlay my pearl and I like to drop it down so that I'm coming down to the pearl more and grinding the pearl down to the top. Typically, the pearl is going to be about 50 thousandths thick. So if you make a 16 or a 16 cut, you know you're going to come down into the top to you hit the pearl. And that should clean up everything nice and neat. The important thing to remember because the fingerboard extension has to come down and match into the ring of pearl, the rosette is larger than a 28-style rosette. Your sound hole needs to go down 
about a quarter of an inch. If you don't, you just get a real, real stub off of the 20th frame. All right? And if you have a question, interrupt me, because this is for you. I want to give you the information that you think that you need. I don't have any questions, Sean. Oh my God. <laughs> Before you get to do any of the actual inlay work on a 45 style, you have to set your neck first. So I generally do all my, my, my rosette work on the top before I brace it. I brace it and then I bring down my top to the desired thickness that I want. I don't do any binding work until I have my neck set. Now, do we have here? So, once I have my rosette, okay, that's my sound hole, this is all my rosette happiness. My fingerboard extension comes down here. And we'll probably cover, I think we can cover that further. Yep, you have all details coming up in the slides, yeah. yep. Okay, each material has its own quirks. I think I talked to you a little bit. The Avalam, I love the Avalam because the more you snap it and crack it, the better it looks. But if you're doing a pre-war style, that's going to be solid shell. And I like to break it. I use a piece of bone or a little piece of steel that I can get in and get the corner. And I just hold it and snap it sideways. Don't worry about making the joints perfect because if you make straight lines in your joint, it will show up. Allow the cracks. If you ever get to look at an old pearl guitar, you're going to see voids because it's a nacreous, nacreous material. It, it, it's porous material. I will drop fill that later after I start doing my finish work. Here you can see I made the note of the top width. I said 0 0.064, 0 0.065. Soon. Okay, quick. Uh -huh. High blue or pearl? You can use high blue, although I am. I like the working time of the type on. It's just easier. But you can use high blue. Uh, Leveling the pearl, Natu nat oh no. I'm talking too fast. Natural or the processed pearl, the zip flex. Does anybody here not know what zip flex is? Okay, the zip flex, you gotta be very tight on your tolerance. The uh, avalam, you don't have to be. I have a note here about straight and curved pearl. You can buy pearl that's pretty shaped, but what I don't like about it, you get a lot of butt joints, and those butt joints are a straight line, and your eye will pick that up. So you like to have the irregularity of the joint from the break. Okay, ethical question. This is about doing conversions. Uh, if anybody, do you want me to skip the conversion part? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Okay, conversions are when you take a beat up old Martin, say like a 1950 Martin, and it's tops blown out, and you rebuild it to the pre-war forward shifted scallop their era. The ethical question here isn't whether is it still a Martin or not. The ethical question here is going to be at what point do you want to make it a conversion? Uh, to me, if the guitar is re a repairable and it does have potential value, you want to restore it to its original condition. You want to find the one where the wife is pissed off and she puts her foot through the guitar. That's the one you want to find. Okay, I, I don't want to see a guitar that is repairable or restorable because it, you're destroying it. You're turning it into something different. And that is, it's more of an ethical question. You know, if you're going to do something for a customer, he brings you a guitar that's worth, you know, 20000 you're going to re-top it and re-pearl it. You're actually probably going to devalue the guitar. So we want to do what is best for the guitar even though the customer is always right, sometimes they're not. So we don't want to, you know, it's an ethical question you have to cross when you come to it. On an existing top, if you're going to convert an existing guitar to put pearl in it, the rosettes are different. Now this can get into a whole different level if I have to put a different rosette on an existing guitar. So let's say the guy has a 75 D28 and he wants to convert it. That's not really an ethical question because the guitar really is not worth all that much money. You plug the sound hole so you can reestablish a center and then you actually just route out, drop in a new disc 
of spruce and then work that back. So it can be done and that's something for later. We'll probably do a video on that sometime. It can be done, but generally I'm doing conversions where the top is being replaced. Myths and facts. Okay, Martin 45, they started them in the early days. The first <coughs> Dreadnought 45, I think, was uh, uh, what? Gene Autry. Thank you very, very much. Uh, they are, if somebody does a D45 conversion, depending who does it, it doesn't always add value. Through the years, the 45s, they were more on the little guitars, and I think Gene Autry was the very first D45 guitar. It, they got it back in the museum, it's a beautiful guitar. If you ever find one of them, you just hit the lot of it. Red abalone was used originally. Now, that's kind of hard to get. Green and blue is what we're using for the color. And the side pearl is less flashy than the top. Martin often used color or pearl on the side, red abalone on the top. Which, which level, which layer on the very bottom line? Which layer is the 20,000s? Okay, uh, okay. This is coming down the side. When you look at the top, you're going to have the binding, black, white, black, your pearl, black, white, black, spruce. On the side, you're going to have a binding, usually white or ivory. So there you're going to have black, white, black, pearl, black, white, and because the rosewood is dark, the black wouldn't show up. However, if you chip something out, you definitely can put a black, white, black. All right. Those are the dimensions used in the old stuff. The modern stuff, you just buy the typical marking black, white, black. <coughs> the side purfling, in this situation, I was using wood. I was converting a 1927 0028 for, who here has heard of Cindy Lockwood? For her guitar, it was her guitar player. So, in order to get the wood binding to bend on the sides. And trust me, it, it, it doesn't bend very well. I put it in my bending machine, and you can see, you set it up, paying attention to the layer of your black, white, black, sandwiched it between, in this case, two pieces of spruce, and then I bent it. And let me tell you, that will save you three beers, 14 headaches, and a sleepless night. And it just goes in really nice. And some so, cuss words, too. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good at that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm too profanity what Rembrandt was to oil. John, the spruce is just thrown away, just to Yeah, it was just scraps. And I, now the side purpling is about 45, 50 thousandths. And I just make it about the same size. And you can see the tape. I taped it all together, made it a tight bundle, because if you don't do that, it'll roll. It'll roll. You got it. Okay, use poly filler strip. Does anybody not know what the poly filler strip is? Okay, you all know what that is? Okay, so you're going to, you're going to do everything with the poly. You don't try to lay the pearl in the first time, because boy, you'll be sloshing if you try to figure that out. Now, in this case, the old back strips were not a 45 back strip. And when I'm doing these older conversions, I've actually gotten the old multicolor backstrip remade, and I will route them out. Did we show a picture of it routing out or just the in, in, inside? I think it's just that. Okay. Uh, the, the magazine article will prob probably be a lot more in depth. And what I do is I take my inlay tool, and I have it set up so that I can cut flush, and I'll lay my, I have a flexible straight edge, I clamp it down, and then I just come down to that line, lay my binding in there, come to the other side with the second one, cut it, drop it in, and I'll glue it in. When you do that, sometimes, because you're dealing with old Brazilian, and sometimes it'll just crack, it is amazing what you can do with Brazilian. A little magic marker, a couple pieces of scrap, you blow it one side, blow it the other, and it's going to look like it matches. So if you do something on one side, do it on the other. In fact, when I'm done here, I'm going to show, tell you a little story. There we go. All right. 
routing the neck for binding. Now here I use my, my inlay tool, but you can use a Dremel. And what I do is I take a little block of wood on the base of my Dremel to create my step, and I just work it around. I mean, it's not rocket science, just making your nip. This happens to be on the headstock. I don't know if we covered it. The binding on the headstock is 40,000, not the 16th that is normally used on the uh, neck and the body. It's more flexible. Well, no, because it, it looks over. It, it looks it's because the headstock. Yeah, it, it looks back. Uh, some of the old Martin stuff. I mean, the work was actually. I mean, they did, did this by how, how do you how do you do how do you using the binding machine or the, the routing machine yeah. or the routing jig? How do you do the route, particularly where you're getting close to the nut? Okay, that is all done with my my little inlay tool, remember my, my little air tool, yeah. and I just set up a stop on there and cut. And you have to do two setups because you have to do the right side and you have to do the left side, and you want to route it before you put the nut in. Yeah. And it, it, it's actually a lot. And you don't of run into the fretboard. You don't run into the end of the fretboard with your with no. your routing tool. No, okay. no, you, you kind of there. You put the bit in the front and come down. Okay. And, if you're taking it real close and just do it, chisel it. Yeah, if, if you got the hand skill, you can do it. You were building from new. You could do all that even before you put your that fretboard. Yes, you can. Absolutely. <clears throat> yes, if you're building from brand new. This I'm, I'm kind of talking right. about conversion, but absolutely uh, on a headstock. Well, especially on the slot head, you really want to get your headstock veneer on and trim and slots trim. Because if you don't, and you get your center line, because you want the center line to the slot itself, you know, the slots, and if they're off a little bit, but you're on the center line, they're going to want to kick. So you always want to go to the center of the visible tail line. Okay. You definitely need to get things done in a specific sequence to make this fit. You can see here, at this point, I have the neck set, and I, I have my binding set, and you can see I have it adjusted to the sound pole. And that is true from a conversion standpoint or a new build. I want to catch this, if you take no, look, notice right here, Although it's not a great picture, you can see I'm catching a pearl because I want the corners of the mitered inlay that I'm doing to be even and catch the same point on one side of the rosette to the other. So if you say you make the guitar and you got the top a little bit off, fudge the neck over, all right? If you, you know, because if you, you're going to kind of figure it out where I fit, take a look, and you got to slide the fretboard over you can always make it work. Here you can see what I created here was a filler strip that added up to my black, white, black, pearl, black, white, black against my fingerboard extension. And I actually connect that on. You can see how I have the clamps on that. All right. Then I come back and I come in. There's my setup with my inlay tool. And then I can come down and I can create a pocket. Now, if you take a look at what I'm inlaying, I'm not inlaying a black, white, black column, black, white, black. I glue it up into a stick. Because it's a lot easier to put one piece in than 20. I will inlay the sound hole piece first, all right? And then I can push the side pieces down. And you can adjust that miter with a little sanding stick. And I mean, you can make it AHT. Anybody here not know what AHT is? Since we're being video. Okay. Now, once I get this done, at the upper end here, you're coming into here, so you have to take the next miter where your side parts come in. So you're going to have the miter on the black, white, black, the poly strip and the black, white, black, and then the binding is going to just roll right in underneath the fretboard. Are you sure you guys want to do a 45? So you can see how that fit up after we were done. Now, the tail and the heel. It doesn't matter which one you do first. You have to create your side miters 
And that is just a simple, just test fit, sharp chisel. You can also use a razor blade. Just take your time with it. But to create the gap on the neck, I'll talk to you about that in a second. We'll talk about the tail piece first. When the pearl comes up along the angle, you can't miter it because then you have a miter and a butt joint. So it's a double miter. That comes up out of the tail piece at a point. So the piece coming in doesn't get totally mitered. It's like a little notch. So that pearl, while the picture is not exactly clear, you have a notch, an angled notch coming into an angled notch. Modern, they just butt cut and run them across. You can see on the tail piece, there is a matching black, white, black going around. So you have a lot of little pieces to lay in there. The neck is where you can really drive yourself nuts because you can get one side wider than the other. So you make yourself a template. You get the template to match the heel and you can use polycarbonate, you use a piece of wood, you can use aluminum. And once you get it to make to the angle, reasonably close, because I mean when you look at these guitars, if you look close, you're going to see maybe a little bit here and there. Then you can scribe that line, to, uh, take another scriber, and you can scribe this. And again, that piece of binding going in under neck, underneath the neck is full width. So when you make your, your scribe lines, you scribe to the outside, and as you go in underneath the neck, there you can start sanding the binding pieces so it fits nice and tight. And if you happen to blow it a little bit that it's wide, you can take two picks and kind of just jam it over so that the show side is tight. So once you get the two ends mitered, then it's just tie everything together and go. I'm at the point now, so you can see the process of before and after. So you can see here where I test fit the pearl. I dropped it in on both sides, just little pieces, and then I can work through that. There aren't many flat spots on a guitar, so I tend to work to the round spot into the waist at the lower belt. You have a little bit of flat, so I just work my pieces in there. Then I can get to that part. I break a piece that's just a hair bigger than I need, and I can push it down and tighten everything up. All right? You know, I have my gap here. I just have it the up a little bit. You're <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, when you're doing a guitar waist, when you're working on a guitar, like here's the Right in here is a flat spot. Okay. So this is where I want my miters nice and tight. So as I'm working my pearl up to this point, uh, let's say it's two inches, two and nine sixteenths. So I'll take a piece of pearl that's just a hair longer than that, break it, and then I can push it in as a hinge joint, and it just pushes in nice and tight, and voila, you're done. If you make it too tight, you push it down and four pieces go fly across the way. And as I'm dropping this in, I'm using tight bond, and I'm working about six, eight inches at a time. This tight bond will start setting up reasonably quick. Try not to wipe so much with the grain, dab it, wipe across, get the worst of the glue up. And I've made myself a little tool, I don't think I, I, I showed it here, just a six penny nail, sharpened like a needle, and then that way I can manipulate the pearl in that trough so that I can close up any joints that, that open up for me. All right? This guitar, too, if you take notice, the, they had a pickup in it. All right? So I had to repair that later. There, you can see the little template that I made at the neck. And that's how I set that line up. Now, I scribed it, I held it there, and I actually used my inlay tool to route it down. But if you scribe it, and remember, use the direction of the spin in your favor. Always feel the left-hand side cutting towards you, or the right-hand side away from you, because that's a fine cut. That way, if it grabs, it doesn't go into the side, it'll go into where you want to cut anyway, and it'll make it a lot easier for you. You can see I've got them set. <coughs> You can see I have my extension set. <coughs> and then you can see all the happy binding tape. 
Now I like the 3M binding tape because when I put it down, it will actually stretch a little bit because the ivory material, when you glue it, will get soft and it will, you know, regular tape will just hold it there. And I just like the, I like that stretching tape. So, is there any more questions to this point? The one thing I do want you to know is here at the neck, that's where the heel's going to go. So I generally just drop fill that in with ivory. You aren't going to see it if you put pearl in there. And as you can see, you start at your tail piece, you start at your miter piece, and you work it away. So when you look at your pearl, again, because I, I bent it, it works with you, it doesn't work against you. But when you're working your, your, your binding, you're always thinking about down and in. But don't push too hard because you can move stuff. It's got to be firm, but not ridiculous. So when you're pulling the tape across, if you have your binding too high, when you're pulling it, it'll want to roll it. So when I set my binding cut, I want to be about 10 thousandths proud to my top and to my back. So I want to sand my sides down to my binding, and I want to sand the top of the binding down to my top and the back. Because if you're trying to scrape the side, if you're trying to scrape the binding to the side, you have a strong tendency to pinch out your binding. And when you look at it, you're going to see your binding do this. OK? OK, pearl is dropped in with tight bond. You can see I have in the bag is solid pearl. In the top is avalanche rock. In this one, I use solid pearl. It's a little bit more, uh, what do I want to say? A little Historic, bit more historically correct. It's historically correct. It works very similar to the avalanche, but since it's solid pearl, it doesn't quite break as easy, but it does break with minimal force. You don't have to go crazy. I use a flat toenail nipper if I have to cut the pearl. Because you can just take little nibbles, file it, and you can make it fit pretty good. Here you can see the, the, the side finish looks all sloppy because of the Duco cement on this particular conversion. But you can see how I'm working six, eight inches at a time. And it's just a slow process. It actually is a lot easier than most people think. But we don't want to tell them that, so we can't charge them. So you're using solid pearl for the, for the size? On this one, I was using solid pearl. Now, the difference between <laughs> solid pearl on the top, or any pearl on the top and on the back, you can break it, and it works very good. Here, are your joints going up and down. So you want to pay close attention to how your joints are looking. If you see a gap, because you have a butt joint like this, lift it, undercut it, and it will close it up for you. Just, just take your time. Now, on the side, if you wanted to, you could set it and fix it with super glue, but don't use super glue on the top. On the side, you can get away with it, but it is, uh, I still prefer to work with it. You can see you're working from the ends to the center, and by the center, I'm talking to that little flat spot. And you still use the, I call it Teflon, the Teflon yeah. I'm calling it poly. Everything goes on, and then you go back and do it. That is absolutely correct. The poly is your spacer so that you don't have to do anything. I think the old ones look so rough because they probably put it in with the binding. You know, that was a, a cottage industry for Martin. A lot of the old guitars were inlaid by people who just happened to be totally. Do you have a question, Mr. Glazer? Hard to believe, I know. I know. The, um, the slot for the poly is the exact same width as the pearl, regardless of the That's just that. Uh, RCH thing. It lets it go in a little bit and let, allows the glue to go around. Uh, I think if I remember right, the poly's 50 thousandths and the pearl's 49, so you got half a thousandths. But it's not uncommon because of the way you tape your binding on. If you need to sand the side to make it fit, absolutely you have to do it. Okay, back is straight forward, just snap, just like you do the top. <coughs> Uh, now I talk about my toenail clipper. <coughs> Undercut the joints to make them tight when you need to. And do a few inches as you go. And then fill as done on top of finish. 
Don't try to fill your pearl until you have a sealer and at least one or two coats to finish. Then you can drop, drop fill. If you're going to use nitro lacquer, take a little, can get something about the size of a, a baby food jar, fill it about an inch, leave it open in about an hour or two, it gets to be about the viscosity of molasses, grab a toothpick, pick up a drop, you put it right in. Why do you wait until you've got some finish on to fill? Uh, because Why not just flood the channel with super glue? Well, well, if you drop it, especially on the top. Well, not on the top. But I mean, I, I know the top is stained. Because if you, I like to put the super glue on, on lacquer only because I don't want the super glue to wick through and drip down the sides because it can run like crazy. Into the top. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're kind of using the lacquer as a, a seal coat. Okay. And you can drop fill. Just let the lacquer thicken up. And you can actually pick it up, grab it with a toothpick and a drop and drop it in there. And it dries pretty quick. Put it in the bag. Cheaper than beer. You won't have to clean. So now you can see what it looks like after it's done. Because it's going to look horrendous on this guitar because it was a conversion. The blue makes it a mess. Now you're going to sand down to it. And let's say that when you sand, you don't have the pearl perfectly flat. Get your seal of coat on there. Now you can back it up with either super glue or finish. That will flush up and it will look nice and shiny when it's all done and rough. Note how the Although this corner is not 100% perfect because I was dealing with a 1927 neck that was already there, if you look real close, it's about a 30 second off to the rosette. That's where the neck was. I, I, couldn't, I could not change that neck because it was already set. That's the way that, that was an older car. But that is well within the realm. If you look at old Martins, you often, often see them, you know, a little bit. So, can you see how easy the process is? It's really not that difficult. It's just one step at a time. Okay, different designs, materials, period correctness, ethics. The design is going to be what you want it to be. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do it marble. It doesn't necessarily have to be pearl. You might want to do this with a chevron or herringbone. In fact, my first couple I did as a herringbone design just to get the process down that I knew it would work for me. So I built two herringbone 45 and it really made the process of doing the 45 later a lot easier because I understood the mitering because that's, that's the part, learning the mitering. Once you know you start at those points and work towards the middle, you'll do just fine. So how, when doing the curves that follow the, on the side of the guitar that follow the heel, yes. that, I understand you scribed, you created a tool, you scribed to establish the, uh, the edge of the okay. curved area, the, the, out, the outside edge of the curved area. Right. How do you establish the inside edge? Well, the inside, okay, I know that I'm underneath the neck. So the inside is not as it's critical. Hidden, but still. Right. How do you do it? I mean, okay. You measure your purpling, you measure your poly, you measure your purpling, you measure your binding, you add it up, and then when you scribe it, scribe it thinner than what you need because the, the binding here was a 316 binding. All right? So when I scribe that, instead of setting it at 187, I set it at 175. Then that way, I could adjust my binding to pull. You know me and my sandwich, and I could get it, and I could push it in, so the binding pushed the purfling, the poly, and the miter tight. Okay? Makes sense? Uh, the first couple times I did it, I used the template. I scribed it with a real sharp exacto blade. I took a scriber, set it where I wanted, just, you know, followed that line, scribed it, and just round it. I, I do it by... I did a free hand and it worked. So just, it, it's something that's going to take a little time, but just be aware of the rotation so you try and cut so that if it runs away, if, if the divot's underneath the neck, nobody's going to see it. Um, okay. When, uh, currently what I have is a Dremel tool and a little screw mat base, yeah. but uh, particularly on a rosette that I did, 
for the proxy when it was sent to me. Uh, it seemed like my hole ended up actually a tiny bit, maybe like it was super tight in one area, and then another the area was a little wider. So I, I think maybe the bearings in my Dremel are not as precise, or the what, fit of the Stumac tool on the rosette. Okay, what and usually happens with them, because I have, I have one of them, I also have one of them. You gotta remember when you're coming around on that riding bearing, make a cut and push it back, you know, cut pushing in and cut pushing out. Okay. Especially on the rosette, if you keep going in one direction, remember there is some pushing fun. against the spindle on one right. half of the turn and, and then pulling against the spindle on the other. There you go. Okay. And because you're gonna hear it here just yeah, so it's not happy with the result of And you always wanna make your rosette, you don't wanna have to beat it in. But you like if you can take your, your thumbnail and squish it, you're fine. If you see a little bit of opening, duco when you're done, just smear a pile of duco on there, let it dry because it's lacquer friendly, and that will help you fill. And you know it's there. You know, two million people will work well for you. So it's not that difficult. Alright? See how pretty, but it can make a difference. And put it this way, if I do Pearl, the last 45 I did, I went from a regular $6,500 guitar to 8500 Not bad for a day and a half's work. Okay? Or it, it's, it can help you make this some work. And it's fun. I enjoy it. End of slideshow. Now, let's open it up to any questions. What time is it, Brian? 3.45. Oh, God, we want to do this real quick. We might have time after the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? I really still don't understand uh, what you were talking about around the neck part. Uh, in, in what way? The, between the long side of the neck, really, uh, what you see there. Okay. Yeah, I, why we I think that? I kind of understand everything else. I think I understand. Do you need lights? Yeah, I was going to say, put the lights on. Okay. Yeah. Now, when, when you're dealing with a curved one that we have the neck, you more involved. So here's the neck. Okay. So you have the black, white, black. Or just follow me. This line's going to represent. That's going to represent what you need to end on. Oops. All right. So you make a template that is going to fit this neck curvature. You can try scribing it, but because of the curvature of the neck, it's very difficult to get a point of measurement because that neck is also, not only is a curve, it does this. So it's hard to find a point to write to. So if you can make a template, and then take your template that's going to fit here, all right, then you can lift the neck out, scribe it, and you have your points out here, then the line in here, <coughs> this line is critical, this line is not. So as this is coming up into this material, you want to create this nice light. Now these aren't going to be 45 degrees, they're going to be whatever they have to be. So you want to create this light right here. So I will cut, I will put this in, and before I set anything on the top, I do my side miters first. Then I can literally take a razor blade, I can put this miter. Then I can bring this miter in. Because this miter has to be set, because the miter that's coming up from the fingerboard extension is also going to come over here. So does that make a little more sense to you? Yeah. Are you sure? I'll call you up and come down. <laughs> you can just make a template on a piece of plastic. Absolutely. Yeah. You just, I mean, I know I can make, you know, I, I understand what, you know, because you have to be able to route that out. Obviously, you have the neck there, so you need a line to do that. That is correct. Uh, you just grab it on plastic and just shake right in the belt mm -hmm. or something like that. Now, you could take, uh, I think the first one I did, I took a pen or a pin, and I just kept scratching until I got a decent line, and then I came back, I have a Draftsman set. They have two real fine and friendly points, and then I just gently kept scratching it until I could see my my line, and then I freehanded it. But making yourself a template will help you to close that up pretty nice. Now, when you're building a white guitar, by that I mean you're building it now. 
if you get the lines off a little bit, you can always sand your neck to match your mistake. Right. Yes, sir. It's still it's still curled in a rosette. Same yeah. process, just just cut short pieces to make uh, to put on curvature. Well, if I'm doing a rosette curl, I, I generally just do it the same way on the top, and I just snap and break, snap and break, and go around. It's, what about the zip flex? Is that worth it, or? You uh, zip flex. I, to be honest with you, I have. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it used. I haven't used it, but I do know because of the tolerance of the amount of material that is built into it, you have to be very careful. And a friend of mine who has used it had trouble, so he had to order more. He used thread to adjust any spot that was just a hair lower, and he. It was tricky because once you go through it, you hit the black rubber, and, and right, so you're gone. On the headstock, yes. Um, you just putting some binding around the outside of it, mm -hmm. like you will on the front board. Pretty much. And then you have two options on the headstock. Usually, a slot head has a sharp corner. I've seen them rounded. Same way with the pan head, they get to be a sharp around. So if they're rounded, I generally do roll. You know, I, I'll make it. I don't mind it. I roll it around with. Iroid binding, if you take a hair dryer or even just some heat, gently work it over there. I use a piece of wood and I just keep doing this with it and as the glue affects it and softens it, it lets it roll into the curve. And I always leave my binding channel just a little bit more so I sand to my binding, not trying to scrape my binding to the side of my wood. I, okay, I'll even I'll show you. Otherwise, you didn't find it. Right? Yeah. Forty-five Say, doesn't have pearl on the uh, No, the forty-five deluxe does. Okay, and you can. It's the same process. But if you have headstock, okay. <laughs> this is your your headstock. Looking at it, so you're going to cut this channel. All right. When you go to set your pearl and you're going to do a test fit, you want your binding just that hair so that you can catch your fingernail on the side. On the top, you want to catch your fingernail on the binding. And that way, it will come down nice and neat. Because trying to scrape it, you end up getting binding doing this. We all, we've all had that problem. All right? And you're saying on the deluxe, you, you put pearl to it? Yeah. Yeah, go on. What you've done in the bottom. Uh, are you staying at the dorm or at the hotel? I'm sorry? Are you staying at the dorm or at the hotel? Um, I'm at the hotel. Okay. Okay. Because I brought Pearlzilla, a team that has a little bit of pearl on it. Uh, yeah, just a tad. Just a tad. Even the insides in late. And I will bring that out to the pavilion tonight. And then you can see. You know, what it looks like. How many people you know in Lake Bluebirds on their tailbone? <laughs> my wife's name's on one side, my son's on the other, and they even put the tree of life on the side support thing. I was up with Dave Nichols, we were drinking scotch. Why don't we do this? Oh, it sounds like a good idea to me! If that guitar was to be a D28, it ended up being Pearl Zilla. Pearl Zilla, it has the, the tree of life deluxe going up. It starts, it just ends at the top of the headstock. The bridge is inlaid, top and sides, and the pick guard's inlaid. These guys have seen it. You inlay a pick guard. Did you inlay a pick guard before you stick it on or after? Hello, Dave. I need a pick guard. Uh, but if you're going to do it, you can do it both ways. You're going to use 10,000 thick pearl on a pick guard. Okay, and you generally try to keep it, you inlay it into the, the pick guard, and you can do it on the guitar, but you don't want to go through the pick guard. Okay? You're going to, it's obviously not going to be dead flat. So, when you, you know, when you're putting the pearl into the pick guard, you're gluing it in mm -hmm. with what? Two coats. 
after you're all said and done, does that get like sanded or leveled and then polished and all of the above? Yeah, doing the big bar is going to take some time. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll say, let's sand that because the acetate, the more you work it up, you'll smell the camper coming out of it, then it's soft. So generally, let's say in 320, you can get it down pretty quickly, and then you buff and polish. And it does buff up and polish, but you want to buff it up and polish on your car, because if you flex it, sometimes it's going to pop. I've seen a lot of the work that Keeper did for me, yeah. but I never really sat and watched them you know, do the pick the right mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have to throw that enough to take into account the buffing and the polishing. Well, you have one big advantage with the acetate plastic. I mean, you want to take your time, uh, ascribe it as tight as you can, uh, but save some of the acetate. You mix it with acetone, and it fills up, it welds itself, and nobody knows that there was ever a gap. That's it. Half, half, half a pearl. You can just take some scrapings or whatever, yeah. and just kind of drop the whole end of your mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <coughs> half, half a pearl inlay is learning how to do your filling. No. You'd be surprised no. how good you can get just with a little bit of practice. All right. Did I teach you something? This all look like your. Hey, different subject, but I have a D35. I'm trying to stretch the binding on it. Okay, you have, it pulled it, off. It's um, fastened on both ends, but not on the top. I'm um, not all the way around the top. Were you the original owner? No, and she's not in there. Okay, here's what you do. You can stretch it with heat. Okay? Uh, you know those little heaters that you get for airplane, uh, they, what do they call it, the, the plastic coat wings. It's just a little heater like this, very small. Uh, probably, try, and I'll tell you something else, try a hair dryer. Okay. I was just more worried about lifting the finish than... Well, that, that's, you're gonna have, that's, that's an easy fix. How far from the neck is it loose? Uh, probably two inches from the neck, two inches from the tail. Okay. Gently work it and pull it out from under the neck. Okay. And then pull it back in and just shove the loose end in under the neck. Okay. Be careful. I mean, just take your time working it. Because if you just keep wiggling it like a loose tooth, it'll, it'll take you a little time. Is it uh, white? It, it's ivory binding? Yeah. Yeah. Ivory binding is prone to shrinkage. So just work it. If it doesn't want to come out, the purfling and all that loose. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's because it sticks to the eyeboy better than the wood that pulls it with it. Yeah. Uh, it's not an uncommon repair. Uh, usually when I get something like that, thank God, they generally need a neck reset, but if they don't, then what you do, take a, just a small, something like a small paintbrush, work acetate or acetone, you know, hold the guitar so it's your loose is up here, work it into the joint, and just keep working it and wiggling it. The ivory is going to get soft, but that glue will eventually work down, work out. Then you can bring it back in. You don't have to bother stretching it because the loose end is going to be in the neck. But you can try heat. That will generally generally help you out. And one way to go, <coughs> tape it down, wait till tomorrow morning and see if it shrinks back. Okay? I like the way you think. Yep. You got an A plus. <laughs> the hell with apples. <laughs> Thank you very much.